I'm not sure how many of you have heard about the Banana Pi open source project, but do know that it's a sort of cousin to the Raspberry Pi, and since they have recently announced that they made available a Wi-Fi 6 router that's dirt cheap, I just had to get one. You can see that we get a power cable and an Ethernet cable in the box, while the device itself is quite compact and lightweight. Know that it is entirely possible to get only the SBC, but I assume a lot of people will not want to deal with either buying a separate case or print one for themselves. The plastic case seems fairly well made, and as expected, the four antennas cannot be removed. Let's not forget that this is a $30 device after all. Everything else seems to be in its place, the ports and everything, as well as the huge array of LEDs in the front. I prefer it this way, since the annoying so-called minimalist single LED alternative is infinitely worse. Now let's go on with the teardown. We do need to remove the four silicone feet which hide the screws and obviously we get no warranty seals. I really hope we see more projects like this on the market, and hopefully with even better hardware. Open source will always be the superior option. The developers have already laid out pretty much all the components, but I suppose this video is a sort of confirmation that you truly get what's being advertised. After removing the screws, use a prime tool to detach the top side, and I was incredibly surprised to see that none of the plastic latches broke. I always break at least one when opening other routers, so the Banana Pi is better built than them. Again, $30. I generally don't know what to say. Ok, now that the upper plastic part is off, we can see the PCB and the four antenna connectors. And yes, the antennas are not soldered to the board. I don't think you'll find many routers under $100 that were released in the last couple of years that don't have their antennas soldered. You know the drill, cost saving and other stuff. After detaching the antennas, there are two remaining screws, and we can now take out the SBC. I had a quick look on the front and rear sides and I suppose one complaint would be the lack of heat spreaders or some small heat sinks. I would pay a few dollars more for a more efficient heat management. Perhaps it's more than enough this way. We will find out in the full review and test video. That being said, let's get a closer look at each of the main components. That's about all for now, thank you for watching and see you next time.